Okay, we're going to be looking at Blender uh, 3D Game Engine. I'm using Blender 2.57 in this tutorial. And uh, basically we're going to create, uh, I've done a tutorial in the past on creating a menu for the Game Engine where you can click on buttons. And a viewer asked me how you can make it so that a button kind of changes size when the cursor goes over it. Um, and that's what I'm going to show you today. So we just have to set up our scene here. I'm going to hit T to get rid of that sidebar there. I'm going to pull this sidebar out a little bit more. I'm going to delete our default cube space. I'm going to add a plane, rotate it x 90 degrees. One on my number pad to go to the front view. And then I'm going to control alt zero on the number pad to move the camera to there. I'm going to scroll to zoom in so that the uh, camera pretty much takes up the majority of our screen here. I'm going to scale this uh, plane we just created up and scale it on the x axis so that it's the same size as our camera view here. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this bottom view here to be a UV editor and we are going to uh, then with that plane selected click uh, tab to go into edit mode and then U and unwrap and you can see that it uh, unwrapped that uh, that plane into our image view here and I'm going to click down here and say image, open image. I'm going to grab an image that I downloaded from the internet. Uh, background image, like so. You notice you don't see in the view up here, that's because we need to click here and go to textured mode. You'll notice that by default it is upside down. Simple fix is down here in the UV editor. Make sure you have all the vertices selected. And we'll hit R for rotate and type in 180 on the number pad and hit enter. If we start up the game engine now, well, first of all, go add to edit mode with tab, hit P, you notice everything is black. A um, few reasons for that, uh, but you know, lighting is one factor, but we don't care about lighting since this is a menu we want it to be shadeless. So uh, with that plane selected, we'll click here on our materials menu, click new, and we'll click shadeless. And if we hit P now, you see it's white in the game engine. Because we now, since we're using a material, we need to say texture, new texture, image, and we're going to choose the background image that we've already imported. I know this seems a little repetitive since we already created texture down here, but we needed to create the UV texture down here because right now, and by the way, I'm going to um, package this image into uh, the project so that we don't need it as a separate file anymore. I'm going to hit P. You notice that it puts it on the plane, but not to our UV texture. And that's why we had to create the UV texture down here, our coordinates down there. We're going to go down here under textures mapping and change it from generated to UV. If I hit P, we have a nice shadeless image uh, that will be full brightness regardless of where the lighting source is. And it fits our full screen here. Perfect, that is our background. Let's create another plane here. We'll say add plane, rotate x90, so it's 90 degrees rotated. I hit three on my number pad to go into side view and hit Z to go into wireframe mode. And I am just going to grab on the Y axis and move that plane just so it's slightly in front of our background plane. Zero on the number pad to go back to our camera view and Z to go back, well, I don't want to go into uh, uh, shading or bounds box. I want to go to texture mode here, so click there. I'm sure there's a shortcut key there for that, but I don't know it, so just go textured. Now let's um, once again do basically the same thing for the most part to add a texture to this. We're going to tab, U, unwrap. We're going to go image, open, and we're going to choose another image. I'm going to choose this Linux button image, which is an image I grabbed off a Google search. Uh, to resize it, once again, we're going to hit A to unselect all, B, grab this, and I'm going to hit G on the x-axis to pull this over. If I had imported the image first, I don't think we would have had that problem, but no biggie, but you notice it's still upside down. Once again, hit A till they're all highlighted, R, 180, it's rotated, and let's scale this on the z-axis a little bit and scale it on the x-axis until it looks like it's how we want it. Now there are, uh, there is a plugin for importing images as planes. Um, 
and it will automatically size it to the size of the image, but I'm showing you how to manually do it because this is a tutorial, so you should learn stuff like that. Um, so we have that image, and if we hit P now, it's a black screen because we have to add our material, make it shadeless, textured. We're going to um, add a new, and we're going to make it a image or movie click from or a imported image button. Once again, I'm going to package that in at this point. Uh, and at this point, uh, we can also change this generated to UV and we hit P. And you notice it's a white background. Well, we need to do some, make some changes here. First off, just for viewing purposes, let's go show alpha because this is a PNG with a transparent background. That shows us the preview here, but if we hit P, you notice it's still white. Well, that's because we need to go into our materials and check transparency and hit P, and now it's transparent. So we have that button there. Now you notice, our, as normal, our cursor is invisible, the by default in the game engine. Well, we can easily fix that. I showed you this in a previous tutorial as well, but we'll go over it again. There are ways to create your own um, custom cursors, but we're just going to use a default cursor and just make it visible. I am going to change this uh, little view here into a text editor. I'm going to say new. I'm going to call it, I'll just call it mouse script, just so we know what it is in case we have other text files in our blend file here. And we're going to type out two lines of Python code. We're going to say import rasterizer. So we're importing a rasterizer module, which is the module that I guess controls the mouse in Blender. And we're going to say rasterizer dot show mouse. And we're going to give it a value of one, which is true. Uh, make sure that it is a capital R. We can now move that up because we don't need that much space. Now, if we just start up the script, it's or start up this game, it's still invisible because we need to connect that script to our game engine. Let's real quick change this image view into a logic editor view. And we'll just select an object that we're not really gonna be doing anything with just to keep things simple. So I'll choose my background image here. And we will change our sensor to be always. And I'm going to say end connect it, we're going to, oh, uh, not end, we're going to change this to Python, and we're going to choose from a drop down our script. So that background image will always run this script, so if we hit P now, you can see my cursor is visible. Now it's time to animate this button so that when I hover over it, it does something. What we need to do first is select our button, and make sure we're at our first frame here. If you're not, uh, you can hit shift down arrow, and that will bring you to the first frame. We're going to hit I to insert a keyframe and choose scaling. I'm going to go up five frames because I want this to be a pretty short animation. And I'll hit S and scale it up a bit, just a little bit. We'll hit I and insert a new keyframe. Now, if you hit your left arrow and right arrow, you can scroll through that animation and see how it changes size from one to five. That isn't effective in the game engine yet, so what we're going to do is with that button selected, we're going to choose a uh, sensor, and our sensor is gonna be a mouse, and we're going to change it from mouse button to mouse over, so when the mouse or cursor is over the button, what are we gonna do? Well, we're going to then connect this, add an F curve, and we are going to say play from the zero frame, you could put one there, but zero is fine as well. And we're going to end at frame five, because that's the animation we made. We are also going to connect this here, and instead of play, we're going to say flipper. That way when the cursor goes off, it, it plays them in reverse. Otherwise, your cursor would go over it, it get large and just stay like that. So now if we hit P, and we take our cursor and go over the button, whoop, whoop, so we have a little animated button now. And obviously you can add other keyframes and F curves for animations when you click on it. In fact, let's, uh, we got a little bit of time. Let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do 
here is I'm going to go, and I haven't practiced this yet for this tutorial, so I hope I don't screw things up. We're going to go to uh, frame six, which is the next frame outside of our sizing animation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit I, and I'm going to hit rotation. So I'm saying a keyframe for rotation. And then I am going to hit uh, up arrow. I'm sorry, I'll hit my left arrow. No, we'll hit up arrow so we go 10 frames, which would bring us to frame 16. I am going to rotate this. I'll say 360 degrees. So just type 360 on your number pad and I'll insert another rotation frame. So now if you hit your left arrow, uh, that's what I thought. Okay, we'll go back up to 16 and instead of uh, 360, we're going to hit rotate 359 and hit I rotation. Now, why isn't it working? So this is what happens when you don't practice stuff before you do a tutorial. Okay, it seems to be going backwards, so it's just rotating a little bit. <laughs> so how do we fix this? Let's do this. Let's go to frame 12, or we'll just say frame 11. And what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say rotate, and we'll say 180, and I'll hit enter and insert a keyframe for rotation. Now, we've got a rotation that goes halfway and back. Let's go rotate 360 again and hit I, rotation C. No, that doesn't do it either. Well, that's a good enough animation. You can play with that some yourself, but we need to, I just wanna show you how you can do multiple different animations. And so that will be our animation for you when you click on the button. So we're gonna add a sensor mouse, we're going to say left button, which is the default, end, and we're going to say F curve, we are going to, uh, we really don't have to ping pong or flipper since uh, we create a circular animation, it ends up back where it started, but just, uh, just to be safe, we'll say flipper, that'll give us a little more of an animation, your choice whether you want to, okay, there we go, connect that there. And this time, instead of starting at frame zero, we'll start at frame six and go to 16. Now let's start our game up here. I'll hit P when I hover. Oh, make sure you're starting your game at frame one. As you can see, the, um, the, the button itself is a little crooked because that's where our animation ends on frame 16. So I'll hit shift down arrow, plus it was enlarged in size. And I'll hit P and we can hover over it, hover over it when we click it, woo! It does a little animation there. So, that's our little animation. So I just wanted to share that with you. And uh, Flipper, as you might notice, if I just click it once, it doesn't go very far. That's because we have Flipper set. Uh, you, can, you can change that to uh, play, uh, end, or loop end. So even if I just tap it, it will do that full rotation that we have set. So those are some options. Hope that gave you something to go on and play with. And I thank you for watching. Please visit the links in the description. I'll upload this blend file to the post on this video, which should be the first link in the description. Also check us out on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, which is also in the link in the description. Visit us on IRC at Freenode. The channel is Pound Films by Chris. And I just want to thank you for watching and hope that you have a great day.